Okay, folks, <clears throat> it may not look like there's much going on out here today, but it's actually one of the most exciting days we've had out in the pasture for quite a while, probably since the last time the snow melted, uh, although we got a significant thing going on this year. So what I'm going to show you is how we do water management. Uh, there's actually a big conference today at the University of Wisconsin Stout and I'm not at to participate in because I'm here actually doing water management and showing you how we do it. I'm going to show you uh, what they're talking about at the university today. So uh, basically what we've done here, we, we do uh, pastured uh, beef chickens out here. There's the boys over there kind of hanging out. Uh, and one of the things that we did eight years ago, uh, after going to a workshop um, on swales and key lighting with uh, uh, Mark Shepard, uh, we decided we could do that here. So I am standing kind of at the epicenter of the action, and uh, what you see all around me is water standing. I'm going to show you how deep it is here. And I'm not down in the bottom, so we've probably got uh, 18 inches of standing water here. One of the reasons it's standing here is because the steers have a path that uh, they've been walking on. You know, they don't like to sink into the snow, so they've, they've kind of packed it down and dammed it up a little bit here uh, before it spills over into the swale right here. Now, what, you, what I'm going to have to tell you here, that you can't necessarily see very well, is this is, this is the low point of a valley uh, that starts right here and continues uh, down to where you can maybe see the standing water down there to the corner, uh, way at the end where the field goes in the woods. That's the low point. So what we did in putting in swales is we uh, did some uh, surveying, laid out the contour lines going to the left and right of the low point, uh, plowed them in, dug them in, did everything we needed to do to get them in. And so now we're redirecting water, we're collecting and redirecting water, sinking it in the ground, and then downhill of where the swales are. Uh, we plant woody perennials that are that are coming up. We actually got our first uh, hazelnuts two years ago on an upper swale uh, to, to our right here. So what I'm showing you is we've got a serious weather event going on here in the upper Midwest uh, right now. Uh, we've had a really severe winter. Uh, the snow out here is is the deepest I've ever seen it because we got a lot of it and it stayed cold and it all just accumulated and now in 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 basically 48 hours we've been uh, uh, above freezing uh, hovering uh, on either side of, of 40 degrees even at night and uh, on top of it rain so th this stuff just all of a sudden started melting almost catastrophically they're talking about flooding all over the upper Midwest. I haven't seen the news today, so I can't tell you what's going on, but it's probably not good. Uh, and so this is where I can't even imagine how much water is just flowing through here. Uh, you can see it here because there's a there's a, a swale right over by these hay bales that uh, come in from uh, the ditch by the road which actually catches another 30 acres of runoff across the road and directs it all into uh, our collection system right here and right here is where the low point is on that swale where it uh, spills over runs across the ground and that's why you have all this standing water here so then this goes into this swale here and gets distributed to the left and to the right. Uh, you can see here <clears throat> that on this side, I mean the water here is like that deep. Okay, so that's another, that's about 
18 inches there. And if you come over here, you can see where I've dug down to here, and that it's uh, it's not bone dry, but there's no standing water there. And this would this is part of the ephemeral stream that would go all the way to that corner down there uh, every year before we put the soils in. So the good news is we are collecting water from uh, what out and about m might be a catastrophic melt. Uh, that's why you want to put these things in is there's there's only a, a couple times that they're, they're used during the year. One is, one is when uh, the snow melts and then the other is big rain events. You know, we're talking four to six inches at, at a crack <clears throat> or more. So I want to go this way and show you why this fits in really nicely to uh, watershed management, on-farm watershed management, because we do have uh, eight steers out here that we've been bale grazing all winter. And uh, we're gonna take a walk over to where they hang out. And they, they, they just came in, I don't know why, because they got, they got some bed and breakfast going on out there. I'll, I'll tell you what that means when we get out there. But uh, bale grazing is when you uh, position bales out in a, in a pasture. Uh, you let the, bale, let the steers into the bales one at a time. Here's their next round. We've, it's March 14th, so we got plenty of hay here to get to uh, the growing season. So we had a really successful bale grazing season. Uh, but what I want to show you is how the swales out here are catching uh, manure runoff and keeping it from going into Devil's Marsh, which goes into the Straight River, which goes into Big Round Lake, which is about a mile from here. And this is why uh, there's more and more farmer-led watershed uh, councils being formed. Uh, there's several in our area up here in northern Wisconsin right now. And uh, the purpose of them is to keep uh, animal runoff and fertilizer runoff from damaging waterways. So I just went. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing around, but it's kind of hard to get it, get around out here. This uh, there's places where the snow here is up to my hips. So I want to show you first where they uh, they've been grazing on uh, this hilltop over here. This is one of our least fertile areas, which is why we put the bales here. And uh, we've been, they've been working through this area all winter long. You can see here where we're about to the end of this pasture and we're gonna move them across to this one probably in three or four days when they get done on this side. But you can see like they're doing a real good job of, of uh, distributing manure urine all over this hillside. I can't wait to see how this place is going to grow this summer. Uh, we're excited about that. We're very excited about that. This is actually some of the worst soil that we have. It's uh, pretty gravelly. Uh, so the um, forage is pretty thin. Here's what I want to show you here is you've got uh, all the snow melt going on and we've had probably a half an inch of rain or more in two days. And so the, uh, actually, it's actually like manure tea, you know what I'm talking about. It's been running down the hill and if the swale wasn't in place, uh, it would just be going into the marsh and then down into the river and down into the, down into the lake. And here you can see uh, manure tea in the hole 
here's the swale and here you can see uh, there's no standing water over here so this this uh, swale here is heading all the way up off this way you can see where the fencing is it goes along the swale and then it goes this way uh, around the hillside to the low point of the valley uh, on the other side we'll get over there in a second but what this is doing right here is keeping uh, manure runoff from getting into our waterways extremely important and uh, the way to do that is with regenerative uh, farming using permaculture to put in uh, buffer zones and riparian waterways and all kinds of things uh, to protect, like I said, uh, waterways. So, uh, just to give you another overview here, and uh, it's really too hard to get around. So, uh, I think I've shown you the points here. Uh, from this point here, you can see uh, this area of standing water down there. That's again at the uh, at the input to the to the to a swale down here, which goes off to the left that way, and then over on this side comes around and meets up where you saw the uh, manure tea uh, standing there and sinking into the ground. Uh, back before we had the swales in at all, this corner way back here, this is the low point of this valley. Uh, in an event like this, the standing water back there would certainly be two feet deep in the water and the slush. Uh, I was walking around there uh, earlier today and uh, it's about five inches deep because all the stuff that's that used to come in from the swales is now being diverted and uh, and and captured because the the uh, soil underneath the, the snow is not uh, frozen so there's not as much runoff because this and the snow has been really really deep so I'm, I'm, it's, I'm saying that the, the water is uh, soaking in already. Uh, it is going below freezing again uh, tomorrow, so some of this big surge is going to slow down, which is you know, probably a good thing. But uh, yeah, this is how we this is how we do water management out in um, out in our pasture area. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, there's lots of people you can talk in, uh, to in, in extension and lots of people around who are getting into these techniques more and more. So I uh, want to uh, do a good job collecting fertility and on your hillsides by bale grazing. And uh, what the most important resource actually on a farm is what water. You want to you collect your water and not drain tile it and send it to the next guy down stream, downhill. Uh, it makes much more sense to put it uphill, put in swales, do some key lining, which is basically cutting slits along contours so water runs down into the soil uh, and soaks in. Uh, it's better to do that than to uh, put in drain tiles and make your water go away. Why would you want to do that? So uh, that's what I got for you today. Uh, I'll probably make a, a part two of this as the as the winter melt happens, and uh, we'll check in on that. So that's what I got. Uh, it's this is exciting stuff. <laughs> it, maybe I'm not a very exciting guy, but this is like as exciting as it gets. Yeah, out here when it's snowing in. Well, it's getting close to snowing. It's chilling down again. But um, uh, yeah, I'm just giddy. Can't you tell? Uh, have a good day. Hope this is helpful. And uh, we'll try to give you some more 
uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks.